Today on Pedalbox, we are undoing a bunch of work that we did a long time ago around our brake system. We're actually going to have to uninstall our hydraulic handbrake and put in a new one, or rather an old one. We're actually putting the TT handbrake and the mechanical braking system back in so that we'll have cable-operated handbrakes rather than just having a hydraulic brake that only acts on the rear wheels. Now when we bought our hydraulic handbrake, we bought one that had a mechanical fixing on the back. This is just a little lever that drops down and when you pull the handbrake up, it locks in place. And that was to satisfy the requirement in the IVA for a mechanical means of holding the handbrake in place. Unfortunately, having spent some time, quite a few people have commented as well, that is probably not going to pass unless our inspector is being extremely charitable to our cause because whilst this is technically mechanical, it doesn't satisfy the requirements of having a brake that can be operated when there is no hydraulic pressure. So if we have a leak in the line, if we've run low on fluid, whatever, this is not going to hold the car at all. So we need a proper mechanical handbrake. Now, because we're using the Audi TT stuff, obviously the calipers have a mechanical handbrake built in. This is a handbrake from an Audi TT. This is not the one that we removed from our donor car. Unfortunately, I cannot find that one anywhere, so we've had to buy another one. We've also bought the cables, and we can run that down through the trailing arms and put it all in as standard. What we don't know is how far forward they're gonna come. We've been assuming that this is gonna be very, very difficult, and we're gonna need the longest cables possible. We might be able to get away with the original ones, but before we get onto any of that, we have to remove our hydraulic handbrake. This is our extremely heavy duty cover, which has worked extremely well whilst we've been doing stuff on the roof, being able to stand on it and not destroy these lines. But unfortunately, these lines are gonna to have to come out anyway, so we're gonna to have to make a new line front to back. And unfortunately, no more hydraulic handbrake, at least for now. <laughs> oh. Okay, I guess we're taking the floor off sooner than expected. Oh God, really? Can you not get into the... Uh... <clears throat> They're just nuts on the back. We've got the hydraulic handbrake out now, so that was a bit more of a faff than we expected. We nearly had to take the uh, coolant lines out. We did have to take a piece of the floor off. We nearly had to take the fuel system apart so that we could get the lines out of the front in one piece. And then we decided since the hydraulic handbrake isn't going in anytime soon again, uh, we just snipped the lines, pulled them out, and that was much faster with a lot less faff. So we can get on to fitting our new lines, uh, new cables rather. So these are bog standard. Audi TT handbrake cables. They have all of the grommets on, which seal them up into the casting, and they have this nice protective layer on. They do seem a little bit thicker, whether or not that's just because this protective uh, rubber um, sleeving was just more worn on the other one from being inside the casting from new, I don't know, but they are a little bit snug to fit in. We've already done the other side, so we just need to get this one on. So there's a hole in the back of the casting, which the handbrake cable goes through, and there's an access port here to direct it round, and another one on the bottom, and it actually comes out on the back side of the casting right down here. Now we've threaded this through most of the way. We just need to get it so that the rearmost grommet sits all the way out like that. So around at this end, there's a little hoop on the back of the uh, brake caliper, and this just pushes up and through. Now, because this has that extra sleeving on to protect it inside the casting, this is quite difficult to bend and I need to get it all the way through. It also doesn't help that this little rubber bellows is jamming. So that's it through there. Now to hold it on the brake caliper, we've just got the standard little clip which goes on over one side of the grommet and on the other side of the bracket and that holds it in, and then that pulls through and goes onto this lever, and that's what operates the brake. Well, now that we've got the caliper end installed and all the way through our trailing arm, it's time to go under the car and show you how the handbrake lever end is going to work. So in the middle, we've got this nice big Bowden section, which is going to be anchored to the car, to the firewall via a P-clip here, that we're just going to put up in the front, cor front lower corner of the engine bay, and that's going to anchor that in place. The only worry we've got is that because it's coming across the firewall that it's going to be anchored here, we kind of have a radius where the cable comes forward through the tunnel to get to the handbrake lever. 
Now we're hoping that if we've preloaded this right, we've tested it on the driver side, but we're not super confident yet because we can't really, it's not really fully tested until both sides are in because the handbrake's got like a little balance bar on it, a little seesaw in the middle. Um, but once we've got this all together, we're hoping that if we've anchored this on the firewall and we've pre-tensioned this section, this sort of clear section of the Bowden enough around the radius into our tunnel, we're hoping that when we pull the handbrake lever, instead of it pulling the Bowden tight, which wouldn't actually deliver any handbrake force at all, we're hoping that by pre-tensioning it, we'll get to a point where just pulling the, uh, pulling the cable there does actually actuate the handbrake. So we're going to put the second one in now for the passenger side, button it all up and see if it works. If it doesn't, we're going to have to think of a way to anchor the clear section of Bowden in the transmission tunnel, which we've got some ideas for, but we don't really like them. Well, now that we've got the handbrake cables attached at both ends, both in our lever here and in the calipers out back, and that we've got the lever partially bolted in, we've reused one of the bolt holes from our old hydro handbrake, we can do a quick check of what these Bowdens do and how much they bend underneath the car, just to see if our concerns earlier were justified. So we're back under the car again, and I'm just going to show you the route that the handbrake cable takes. So we've got at one end, we've got the handbrake lever on the caliper there. It runs through the trailing arm, spits out up in here, and then it runs across please excuse the shoddy camera work, it's quite de quite cramped under here, runs across in this big fat Bowden onto this P-clip that holds it to the firewall. We've then got the final section of thin Bowden. This is the stuff that we were worried about having to preload to take all the tension out of. And then that then runs through into the center tunnel and pops out in this bright section up there into the back of the handbrake. So that's all fully connected now. And I'm pretty sure I can see a pair of Adrian's feet nearby. So if he could just pull on the handbrake lever a couple of times, we can check that, yep, so you can see it taking up tension, you can see it taking up tension in the Bowden here, but it does actually work. Everything seems to pull, pull together quite nicely, there's no movement or anything on a little P-clip here, so I'd say this is a resounding success. We've got the P-clips in now, which means it's time for the final check. When we pull the handbrake lever up, do the Bowdens move? And unfortunately, the one on the, uh, on the passenger side there still does. It creeps forward a good few millimeters. It seems to be sliding quite easily inside the P-clips. So my guess is our P-clips are just too big and they're not actually holding the Bowden in place. So we're gonna have to get some smaller ones and try this again. But it's a weekend, so that's not happening today. So this is the best we can do for now. But in the meantime, we can at least get the handbrake lever itself bolted in the rest of the way and maybe start work on an enclosure just to cover up this stuff here. Now, while we're working on the brakes, we might as well try and install something we've never actually attached onto the car, and that is our brake bias adjuster. So this is a dial which we'll have to put a mark on, and this will allow us to adjust the brake bias balance bar, try saying that 10 times fast, in the pedal box or on the master cylinders in the pedal box. So this will allow us to adjust how much brake pressure is going to either the front or the rear of the car, pretty much on the fly. So this screws through a 20 mil hole, has a little lock washer on the back and this will hold into the back of a panel. With that in mind, I have made a panel and now I'm looking at it. Mike screwed this one up. Yeah. Yeah, second time's charm, apparently not, third time. So I think I've put this hole too far down towards the corner of this, this panel because this edge needs to fold over and go underneath the frame on this side of the instrument cluster. We didn't want it too close to the steering wheel so it would get blocked. And I just looked at this and put it roughly central off each edge, forgetting that I'd actually planned on folding this underneath. And Chris is gonna check for me when I put this down in place, whether or not the frame is visible. Yes, I can feel it. I and Chris has an unhappy face that I have put this hole in the wrong place. Um, Hmm. Well, with that abject failure of a panel behind us, I'm not going to try and make it a third time today. I'm going to ignore the problem and we're going to deal with it later. I'm really pleased that we've got the brakes done. I'm going to call that a win. And I'm extremely happy that we managed to get away with just using the standard cables. It meant we could use all the original grommets, everything else. 
I am astounded that we didn't have to um, kind of finagle them to join up on the back. And it kind of makes sense when I think about it. On the TT, you have all of the same distance between the handbrake and the wheel, but you have two less seats in the back. You have an entire sort of leg length that would normally be on a second set of seats behind the front ones that that cable would have to run through. And we don't have that, so of course the TT ones were going to fit. If only I had thought this, I could have saved myself a lot of time, and this could have been done probably months ago. But this is where we're at. So if you'd like to support us in our endeavours to try and build more of this car and actually get it at least driving this year, maybe not legally on the road, but perhaps on a track or an airfield somewhere, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. And all of those tiers also get discount on the shop, shop.pedalbox.show, where we have t-shirts, hats, beanies, long sleeve t-shirts like the one I'm wearing underneath this, but you can't actually tell. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we put out another video on this, the Thunderbird, or anything else that we're working on or places we've gone to. Thanks very much for watching, follow us on all the usual social media channels and we will see you next time.